So, tell me about Tokyo Ghoul. Okay, so we watched Tokyo Ghoul immediately after watching Death Note. As I'm sure people may have noticed by now, I'm not the biggest fan of Death Note. Yeah, we kind of hated it. Death Note was awful. So, I'm going to try and be as objective as possible about this show, but no matter how I look at it, this show is always going to be tainted by the fact that it's not Death Note, so it is essentially impossible for me to hate this show. Yeah, I kind of loved it just because I'd been conditioned so badly to hate Death Note. Mandy? Yeah? I hate this show. You do not. This is a great show. We finished Death Note and I was like, let's never watch an Edgelord show ever again. And you were like, okay, let's watch Tokyo Girls. Tokyo Ghoul. And I was like, thanks. That sounds pretty wholesome. I'm pretty sure Tokyo Girls is something different. No, this show is definitely called Tokyo Girls. It is kind of like a maid cafe show. Exactly. Tokyo Girls it is. Okay, with that out of the way, we start out listening to some radio chatter about how there's definitely some girls intruding in some building. They're ghouls, not girls. No, they don't say ghouls. They definitely just have like a Broadway Chicago accent. <laughs> them ghouls running wild. Them, them Tokyo ghouls. So we meet this chick who's doing the cannibalism. The cannibalism? Her name's Ritzy. I like that name. Then Jason Voorhees shows up. Oh yeah, he kind of does look like Jason Voorhees. It's Jason Voorhees with Catwoman claws. He is. He's pretty great. He's awesome. They threaten each other for a little bit, make some vague references to a deeper plot that probably doesn't exist. Then she steals his pliers and runs away. It's true. She does. The worst part is I haven't had to make fucking anything up yet and this show is still stupid. Yeah, n- none of that was a joke, but it sounds like it. Super Edgelord, nothing of any relevance. So after this, we get a bunch of exposition over the radio in some fetish cafe. <laughs> Sadly, Onision isn't here to offer to buttfuck. What a shame. So, it turns out that in this alternate history of Tokyo, basically everything is the same, except there are goyles who are basically umpires. Goyum? Goyles. Goy. Girls. Mashugana. Yes, and they're basically umpires. Vampires, don't you mean? Umpires. Umpires? You know, like my favourite movie, The Umpire Diaries. (laughs) That's not... It's Interview with an Umpire, but... Yeah. So, they're basically umpires, only without any of the weaknesses. They're super strong, super durable, they need to eat human flesh to survive, except they don't. Yeah, that's true. They have weird looking eyes, except when they don't. Yeah, that's also true. And they have a secret underground society that functions basically like organized crime, and for some reason no one notices the constant stream of dead bodies they need to fuel their existence. That's also true. So, exactly like the story line of Blade, 30 Days of Night, Twilight, Underworld, Buffy, What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah, that sounds true. They're just umpires without any of the weaknesses. Yeah. Fortunately, there's a government agency that hunts them down called the CCG, which as we all know, stands for Collectible Card Game. No. That's right, guys. It's Nintendo America. Oh my god. (laughs) What kind of dystopia is this? So, while we're listening to this exposition, we finally get to meet our glorious protagonist. Yep. His name is Person. I think his name is, like, Ken or something, isn't it? No, his name's definitely Person. Oh, okay. He's having a conversation with his best friend, Huge. No! (laughs) He's having a conversation with his best friend, Huge, about how somehow the two of them have made it to their late teens without ever talking to a female person before. Sounds like a typical high school virgin. Sounds like a typical not another hen type movie. (laughs) Yeah, that too. So, to demonstrate exactly how they've managed this, Huge calls the waitress over and asks her what her name is. Apparently it's Togepi. No, Togue. That's what I said, Togepi. No. She asks what they want to drink and Huge immediately asks if she wants to butt fuck. <laughs> As you do. Then she leaves the cafe, either in embarrassment or to go and find Onision. 
Meanwhile, a person sees his crush come into the restaurant. She looks suspiciously familiar, but she was wearing glasses, so she couldn't possibly be anyone we've seen before, because we haven't seen a character wearing glasses yet. Because, you know, wearing glasses completely changes your whole face and appearance. It does. Also, uh, Clark Kent is sat at the table behind her. (laughs) I I wonder if he's ever met that Superman fellow. (laughs) I mean, they live in the same city after all. Maybe they go to the same optician or something. Well, it's possible. I mean, I guess that one doesn't make so much sense because uh, Superman doesn't need to go to the optician. He had laser eye surgery. (laughs) Uh, That's how he got those laser eyes. (laughs) So, person suddenly realises that the girl he has a crush on is reading the same cookbook he's reading. It's about goat eggs. Yum. No, no, that's not right at all. I think it was like a drama novel. It wasn't a cookbook. Look, the book is called Something About Goat Eggs. (laughs) They agree to go on a date to the bookstore together, and he finally finds out her name. Sentacos, please. Sentacos, please. So, we cut to their date at the bookstore, where they're having dinner in a restaurant. Okay. I guess the bookstore is like the name of some trendy Tokyo restaurant. (laughs) It really sounds like it, actually. I could see them being a trendy restaurant called The Bookstore. That's like the most hipster restaurant I can imagine. Uh, Yeah, I could see that happening. I'm honestly surprised they didn't go to Burger King. (laughs) I mean, person was talking about taking her to the Fat Girl Burger Bar earlier. Wow. Person gets a bit of a cough and gets a face full of boobs. Nice. Definitely not a hentai, by the way. Oh, no, not at all. Then they discuss how hungry they are and what the weather's like and how fast that paint on the wall is drying. Jesus. I mean, like, just look at it go. It's getting so dry. So, you know, just the kind of stuff that we want to see in the show. People talking about shit that doesn't matter. Yeah, this day going great. So, eventually they're done with their date, and person decides to walk Sentaco's please home. (laughs) For her safety, naturally. Oh, absolutely. And to get some butt fucking. (laughs) I mean, why not? But it turns out, all along, it was a ruse! Dun dun dun! There never was any said tacos, please. Oh, shit. No tacos. I mean, they went to Fat Girl Burger Bar. <laughs> of course there was no tacos. <laughs> Just bars of lard. Nice. Who could have guessed with that convincing disguise of a pair of glasses and name which just happens to be the same as the author of the book they both read? Wow, he missed it. He missed that entirely, huh? Yup. It's just like, hey, I-, I met this great match on Tinder. Her name is like J.K. Rowling. I'm like, she looks kind of hot. I'm gonna try and go on a date with her. You go for it, Mandy. I mean, I found this great match on Grindr called J.R.R. Tolkien. So, Sentaco's Please is actually ritzy, and it turns out all along she wants to eat person. Oh, man. And person is worthless, so now he's going to get eaten and die. So now he's gonna get butt fucked instead. Yup. Man, I hate it when that happens. Definitely not a hentai, by the way. No, not at all. Except, being being our glorious protagonist, obviously he couldn't just die straight away. Oh, yeah. So Ritzy bips him a bunch until the GM gets mad and rocks full and everybody dies. It's true, like, this giant piece of building just falls on her like a fucking Acme anvil. It's actually pretty comical. It's amazing. Also, anyone who wants to claim this isn't an edgelord show, I would like to quote for you the line, there's something I like more than reading and it's ripping the organs out of terrified people. Ah, yep, that sounds like something written by Onision. Also the worst line ever written. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, this is is followed by the best scene of all time. I know everyone who knows the show is dying for me to talk about it, but I think since Mandy is the trained medical professional here, Mandy should explain the upcoming scene to everyone. Okay, so I have a lot to unpack here about this fucking hospital and the amount of OSHA violations that it crosses in five minute span that it's on the screen. So, first of all, they wheel this guy into the hospital and he's like, okay, he doesn't have any abdominal organs. We need to give him some new ones right now and replace all of them. So, unspecified abdominal organs, the nurses are just like, yeah, okay, that sounds great, boss. They don't, you know, specify which ones, how many of them. They're just gonna do it all in one surgery. I believe the lines the nurse say directly is, prepare for organ transplantation. (laughs) It's just like, wait, hold on a minute, which ones? And then, you know, they go through with it, and they replace his eyeball, and his tongue, and his skin, and no abdominal organs. 
organs and he's, you know, in hospice for two weeks and not on a drip IV or anything like that. And they're like, so how you doing over there? He says, I haven't eaten in a week. And they're like, oh, that's fine. We'll just let you right out the clinic. Just go on home. You're fine. This hospital needs to get shut down. This hospital is dangerous. Did we talk about, by the way, how he's like, he needs the organs of the other girl that died to survive? Oh, yeah. Not only did they put female organs in him, they didn't even go ahead and try for any kind of blood testing. They just went for it. And on top of that, she's a different fucking species. They, uh, they also, I guess, just don't have organs hanging out in the hospital. No, it's not like they have donations or anything. Nope. Also, they explicitly say that they didn't get consent from the next of kin. <laughs> I'd just like to bring this up, just in case there weren't enough OSHA violations. This hospital needs to get shut down. So, person wakes up in hospital and is having difficulty eating. So, knowing this, the doctors decide to discharge person without telling him where they got the organs from, or setting up any checkups for him to come back, or doing anything about the fact that this boy hasn't eaten a goddamn thing since being admitted. They didn't even have him hooked up to an IV. Hey Mandy, did we talk about which organs they considered abdominal organs yet? Yeah, apparently it's his eyeball, his skin, his tongue, and no actually abdominal organs. Let's just be fair here. It was only his left eye. Fair. Well, not very fair on him. He got that medical treatment and had to pay for it. (laughs) So person gets home and he's pretty hungry so he decides to make his favorite hamburger. He takes one bite, cries, then vomits. Big mood. Big fucking mood. So, naturally, he decides that the doctor was wrong about psychological trauma, suggesting that he might have psychological trauma and that's why he wasn't eating, and that he must be a girl. A ghoul? A girl. A girl. They put girl organs in him. They did put girl parts in him. Uh Uh-huh. That's true. So he is kind of both. He's a a ghoul. (laughs) Yes. So he does the only logical thing. He grabs a kitchen knife and plunges it into his own stomach. Again, big mood. I mean, if he's a girl, his skin will deflect the blade and he'll be unharmed, right? And if he isn't, then he'll just die a slow, painful death. Seems totally rational. Seems legit. So, discovering he's somehow been turned into a girl after the surgery. What kind of surgery was this, by the way? A real bad one. Just a real, real bad one. Rather than going to the hospital and being like, WTF, mate? Instead, person decides to go and find a person to eat. I see. By the way, can we have a WTF mate shirt? (laughs) So he finds another girl who offers him a piece of his corpse, then is immediately murdered by another girl. Yep. Glad to see that these ravenous monsters that feed from the flesh of humanity are relatively rare. Yeah. You know, they only eat once a month and the average human has a child every 290 months. But since that takes two people, that's effectively every 600 months. So if we assume ghouls eat 100% of the population, they must only make up one person in 600 in order to keep the food stocks appropriate. Okay, and that seems fair to me. That assumes that they eat every person who ever dies, of course. Of course. Look, I get it. If he didn't meet other girls, this show would be dumb and boring and a terrible hentai. Kinda. I'm just saying they should be a lot more rare than they seem to be. Yeah, that's true. Or there should be way better explanations about how they manage to sustain themselves. Also true. Seriously, guys. So, this new guy accuses person for stealing corpses from his hunter ground and person is like nah man I was just passing by so the new guy is all like look imagine your girlfriend is lying naked on the floor and then he said some other stuff but I was busy imagining Mandy laying naked on the floor so I kind of missed what he was saying hey I was just doing what he told me to seriously that guy paints a really good mental image it was like imagine Mandy lying naked on the floor he didn't say that good mental image then Togepi shows up and tells the new guy to fuck off. Apparently, his name is Nido King. <laughs> Nido King. They have a little fight and Togepi uses Bide and Nido King has to return to his Pokeball. I see. Then Togepi is like, yo, person, you should eat this corpse. Hey, your eyes are weird. You must be a protagonist. (laughs) Then Togepi does what can only be described as a force-feeding body slam on person. (laughs) 
it's true. He does. Seriously, it is pretty badass. And hilariously dumb. Want to find out what person thinks about being punched in the mouth with a hamburger? <laughs> well, you're going to have to wait until the next part of the review to find out. In the meantime, why not watch the show and find out for yourself? Link in the description below. Or you could tell us what you think's going to happen in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell and do your taxes and wash behind your ears. You should also check out our Patreon because I am running out of tea and I won't be able to make it through more bad anime unless you fuel my addiction. <laughs> I've got a bunch of rewards available and the more people show interest, the more we'll be able to add. I really want to add a tier to Patreon where we send you a new My Dumb Boyfriend shirt every month. But to do that, we need to start printing shirts. And we need to hit the $100 a month region from Patreon before we can afford to do that. Mandy, I want a BIP shirt. I want a BIP shirt too. What shirt would you like for the store? I just said a BIP shirt. What other shirts would you like for the store? I want a It's Very Important Because It's Mentioned Never Again t-shirt. That's a good choice. Uh, how about a butt fuck counter shirt? No. Uh, how about a Death Means Nothing shirt? I do like that one. Everyone's gonna want a Death Means Nothing shirt so they can be an edgelord like in Tokyo Girls. Oh, definitely. How about a Mandy Giggling dot wave shirt? I want that so we can send it to our friends Madrai over at twitch.tv slash Madraibread because I know he's come across this in editing just as much as I have. <laughs>